Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create custom items using the Mesh Modeler and creating any kind of bank turn that you want. So let's say, for example, we have our map here and we wanted to connect it with a nice smooth turn. Um, so if I go into the existing items here, um, this doesn't actually line up um, because of, of two reasons. One is our, our it's, it's too short and then it's, it's also too small of a turn. And so if I wanted a nice smooth turn here, we're going to have to go and create the item ourselves. So to do that, uh, we're going to use the mesh modeler. I would recommend setting the light settings. So select the light settings and set them to the daytime. Um, it's a lot easier to see certain things in the mesh modeler if you have things in the daytime and also go ahead and save your map. Um, the mesh modeler is known to crash. And so you want to save often um, and always save before entering the mesh modeler. So let's go ahead and create our item. So we'll go on item mode on the bottom here. Under next to modes, click the arrow to move to the item editing options. And we'll create a new item by selecting this middle icon here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this, it doesn't matter what direction we do, but we'll go ahead and put it um, right here near where we're actually going to place it. So now we're in the item editor and um, we got there just by clicking on the ground and we're going to edit the mesh. So on geometry and then mesh, let's go in and edit by clicking on those gears. And here we're, we're going to start by deleting the block that comes with a new item by default. So currently our item looks like this square. We can just click on it, hit the delete key on the keyboard, and that will delete it. We want to create an item that um, is, or essentially that, that bank turn. And we, we want it to match up perfectly right here. These blocks are 32 meters wide. So we're gonna start by creating a face that is 32 meters long. Um, so it'll, it'll fit perfectly right there. And we, we also wanna start the face at the origin um, to make sure that when we place the item, it, it's really gonna line up perfectly. So we'll go to the creation tools on the bottom here go to create face and we're going to set our tool step. So click on the tool step in the bottom right, and we're going to set our tool step to one meter. And to create a face, you click to start a face. Um, we're going to click on the origin here to start it. And you click everywhere you want a corner. So we're going to go click, go 32 meters, click one meter over, click, all the way back, 32 meters, click, and then back to the where we started and double click. So the last point where we double click on, that's where it creates our face. So now we've created our face. We're going to want to actually line it up with this. And so we need to move it upwards, um, just, just for our, kind of our, our visual reference so we can make sure we're creating things in the right spot. So I'm going to set the tool step to 16 meters, select on move, press control A to select the whole thing. And we're going to move it up on the green axis, 16 meters. And so you can see this is going to align perfectly right here. Um, and these, um, this white section, this white border is one meter. The black border is one meter. Most items in track media are two meters tall. And we're going to make ours two meters tall as well, but first we have to line it up with this. So this black um, angle is what we need to match. And to do that, we can move the edge on the left here up 16 meters to match perfectly. And when we're, so to do that, let's go back to the selection tool, um, click on the face, and then we want to select the edges that we're going to move. So it's usually easier to move kind of these corners or, or these little points than it is to move an edge. So I'm going to click on the, this point to highlight it in yellow. Anything that's highlighted in yellow is what's currently selected. Then I will hold control 
and click on the other um, endpoint so that these two corners are now selected. Then I'm going to click on one of them. Or so we're going to select both corners. Click on move and move it up. There we go, 16 meters. So yeah, for some reason it deselected for me there. Um, so hold, hold control, click on each corner. So click on one, hold control, click on the second one, click on, and I guess you can do that while move is, is selected as well. Um, and then click and drag. And so now that we have it, our, our tool set, of 16 meters, this is going to line up perfectly. Uh, so the next th thing we need to do is make our face two meters tall. So we're gonna set the tool step to two meters and we'll go to the modeling tools and we're going to extrude selection. So I'll press control A to select the entire thing. So the whole thing is highlighted in yellow. Click on extrude selection and we want to extrude it not to the side, but actually upwards. And so we'll go from here up um, just one step uh, along the green axis. And now that kind of creates um, the starting point for our bank turn. So from here, we wanna make sure that we have a nice smooth turn. And in order to do that, we need to do um, subdivide the faces. So again, we can hit Control A to select everything. Uh, go to the advanced tools, which is the middle icon in the bottom, and then click on subdivide. And you can see when I clicked on subdivide, it created this into smaller sections. I'm going to subdivide twice to create a, a really nice smooth item. Um, the more times you subdivide, the more edges you're going to have, which means the bigger the item's going to be in terms of like kilobytes or, or megabytes um, and how much space your item takes up. And so if you wanna have more items, you don't want as many faces. So now we have our subdivided bank turn starting point. And this is a great place to save the item. Um, if we wanna create additional bank turns in the future, we can kind of have this as a template or as a starting point and um, use that for, for other turns we need to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And I'm gonna save this as like my bank turn template and that'll kind of be um, just in case we need to make bank turns in, in the future like this, um, that'll be perfect. So the next thing we need to do is actually deform, do, do the deformation to make sure these actually connect. So, and you can see there, even though there's a little gap here, that's totally fine because we're, we're gonna actually be using the tool step to measure out the distances perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and um, I clicked on selection and selected the whole thing. And we're gonna go back to the to the modeling tools and select this, which is the second icon. And we're gonna click on deformation. And so you can see when I clicked on it, it's pointed in this direction. So wherever this neon green face is, is the direction we're going to deform it. So I don't actually want to deform it over towards the sands over there. I want to deform it um, just continuing along with the road. And so to change the deformation direction, you click on the orange dot that's in the middle that is opposite wherever the green neon face is. So we'll click on this orange dot right here and that gets us back to the this kind of selection where we can select which way we want to deform. So in order to deform towards the left, we want to select the orange dot that's in the middle right here. So I'll go ahead and select it. And so th this was the orange dot that was in the middle on the right hand side. So that way we're deforming towards the left. So in order to um, to move this. So we want to make sure we get this math right. So th this is currently one meter wide. We're going to set the tool step to 31 meters and we'll create first kind of like a 32 by 32 meter block. 
Um, so I set the tool step to 31 meters. And now I'm going to select this, um, this neon dot, the neon green dot that's right in the middle. So we don't want the one on the face here, but we want the one that's in the middle connected to the orange line. And so, so it's gonna be this one. But we do need to, to zoom out a bit to see where we're going. So select that dot, and then I'm gonna click and drag over here, just one step, and that will now make our block 32 by 32 meters. And we need to keep dragging, keep moving it over um, to line up here. So the, the middle dot here, the mid, very middle of our slope, we're going to want to align that with the very middle um, right here. So I'm going to set the tool step to 32 meters and we'll go over again two more steps. So you, you always have to select the dot once to select it and then click and drag it again to move it. So there we go. So now we're, we're getting a bit closer and you can see that this is actually lined up with the edge here, uh, if you take into consideration this offset. So we need to move it over another 16 meters so we end up in the middle of this block. So I set it to 16 and clicked on once to select it and then once and drag it to move it. And so now we have, um, and it looks like it went two steps. So there we go. There's one step. So yeah, just click and drag it over 16 meters, which is one more step um, so that we can align it with the middle here. So the next thing we need to do is actually bring it over to the right. So each block is 32 meters. So 32 plus 32 is 64. And then we also have 16 meters um, from like the, the half block. And so that's going to be 80 meters that we need to move it. So we could set this to 80 and do it in one step. Um, so let's give that a shot. So we'll click and then click and drag it over. And it's, it's possible I did that math wrong. And we, we actually need to move it over another 32 meters. So I'll set this to 32. Click. Click and drag over. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I guess it would have been a total of 112 meters that we needed to move it, um, but that's okay. So as long as, long as we're using the tool step, doing the math right, um, we can kind of move it anywhere we want. So the next thing we need to do is move it down. And so we're also gonna need to move it down 16 meters. Let's see, click and drag right there. Okay, perfect. So you can see that we actually need to rotate this face as well to get it to line up properly. So to do that, we're going to select the dot that's on the right-hand side of the rectangle here. And when you select it, it lets us rotate it. And you can see that, um, like let's say we, we rotate it just a little bit. Um, you can actually get this angle perfect by looking at the color. So for example, um, so click, so sometimes you might get into this view where you see a green dot. Um, that green dot will create additional faces. So like if we wanted this to go like in an S shape or, or something, um, or back and forth, you can create more of these little green neon planes. But for now, we're gonna click on this neon dot so that we, we can view these dots on the edges. And then we'll click on this one and move this um, over. And we actually need to move it exactly 90 degrees. Um, See. So 
I think because of like, let's see, click, click. So normally this, you can see this and it changes color um, when it gets to 90 degrees. But we'll, we'll just experiment a little bit. Okay, that, yeah, that looks right. So yeah, that, that's perfect. So those are, I think they're in like five or 10 degree increments. Um, but we'll go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. And so that should line up perfectly once we uh, line this up perfectly as well. So right now our block is um, pavement, but we're gonna wanna change that into grass. And so we're, we're done with the deformation. Um, we have our bank turned the way we want it. So I'm gonna go back to selection and, and just kind of select everything using control A. And then we'll go into materials, which is this paint can. And in materials, we can select what kind of, um, like do we want plastic or, or metal or, or what, what do we want? Um, so select the materials. And on page 10 here, um, so I guess that we have many faces on this, so it's getting a little slow, but uh, so on page 10 here, we have custom grass. And so we can do this to make um, grass of, of different colors. So I'm gonna select that. And that's gonna apply the grass to everything we have selected. And let's go ahead and make kind of like a almost teal or kind of like light teal looking grass. So apply the material to selection. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, so I'm gonna just call it bank turn one. So the, the more, yeah, the more edges, the more faces you do, um, the, the slower this modeler is gonna get. So the next step is to click this little arrow to leave the editor and go back to our placement parameters. So we wanna be able to place this perfectly like as a normal block. So on the placement parameters, I like to do a fly step of one meter. Um, so when you scroll the mouse wheel, that's how far up or down the item's gonna move. The horizontal size, I'll do 32, and the vertical size, I'll say eight. Um, the, these don't matter. The horizontal size will let us move things around um, very nicely. And the vertical size doesn't really matter too much, I think. So we'll go ahead and save that with our parameters. Uh, no, we don't wanna quit the map. So now we have our item and you can see that, let's delete that one. Um, if we place it like in the normal editing mode here, this is just gonna line up perfectly. And the reason it lines up perfectly is because we started that face right at the origin and we used our our tool steps to calculate everything along the way. So let's go ahead and test out our track. Um, so you can see when you're on grass, you have these little um, trails behind you of grass. And so we'll still see those trails while we're on our custom item. <laughs> 